costumes, of course, was going to be a pivotal part of this whole thing. I mean, and I also knew that's why production value, this is why the film so worked. I mean, everybody had been out in the desert a thousand times doing Mad Max films where everyone's wearing brown or black. But my simple concept in all this is just to do the opposite colour. And that's why the costumes stand out so much. There's this blood red desert with a lime green sequin dress in the middle of it. Nobody had ever done that before. And the, immediately your eye goes straight to the costumes. And that, you know, that was a big tipper in the academy department, I think. You know, the costumes were ultimately showing off to such a point that you couldn't see anything else. It was costume based. The characters actually evolved in their looks out of uh, a montage of all sorts of bits and pieces. Terence really wanted to be uh, Jacqueline Bissett and that was his big thing and he wanted Brooke Shields eyebrows and he, he started collaborating all this together and of course I'd just be sabotaging without him knowing about it so you know I'd be just trying to make it worse. I mean we took mirrors away from Terence which was very important because in his head he began to evolve and then you know everyone naturally evolved on their own. I mean Hugo has gotten the most extremely awkward face so we really played with that. We really made his awkwardness more awkward. Guy was just, he's just a walking Barbie doll at some point. We were just seeing how m more ridiculous we could make this man. And, you know, it was funny the way it just evolved, but it did naturally evolve on their own. I mean, their looks just happened. Aren't we fabulous? Mwah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lassiter's Casino of Alice Springs presents Miss Mitzi Del Bra, Miss Felicia Jolly Goodfellow, and Miss Bernadette Bassinger. The Sisters of the Simpson Desert. Lizzie Gardner was one of my oldest girlfriends I grew up with her. And uh, she uh, didn't quite know what she wanted to do when she left school. And she said, I think I'd like to wander into something to do with uh, design. And she went to Italy and did a design course and came back and said, well, maybe I should do something. So I sort of, as an AD, gave her a first break at just being a costume assistant. So we had a long history there, which is almost like 20 years. Tim is a friend I've known from the, um, the drag scene in Sydney all my life. They're just one of those pivotal rat bags who are right in the middle of it all, causing trouble. And uh, he had uh, a good design flair too. So literally, they'd been doing a little bit of soap opera together and a few bits and pieces, but hadn't really done anything. I'd sketched things within the script. I'd come up with some ideas like Emus or Sydney Opera House and whatever, and we went from there, then let them go. So, you know, they got given carte blanche at this point. I think the entire entire costume budget in the end was probably, you know, it was only about $5,000, $4,000. We were very lucky because Tim's mum works in Kmart and she got a 15% discount. So all those costumes are made on a 15% discount from Tim's mum. We shot that whole production number in the end with three costume changes. We did that in one day, which is extraordinary. And those costume changes were an hour and a half turnaround between costume changes. A lot of the costumes too were just, were, you know, they were not, they were, you know, people start saying, where are those fabulous, you know, Academy Award winning costumes? Well, the bottom line is they all fell apart. I mean, within eight seconds of finishing shoot, they were just, they were just pieces all over the ground. I mean, they were done with string and sticky tape and whatever. We had no money. You know, and like last minute decisions in there, like the, the lizards actually go, ah, 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 at that point in the film. And I said, they've got pink tongues, we've got to put colouring food dye on their tongues. We didn't have any food dye. You send someone down the local, we get back there, and Terence was so humiliated by this point. He's got a shower cap on, the spring-loaded thing, I'm going to tell him, completely fell apart. And uh, finally, we just got something together, holding it for this final sequence. And Terence spins around and says, no, I will not humiliate myself any longer. I will not let you dye my tongue. And we, we came to this moment where, you know, we're up against a wall, and I said, tell. It'll be funny, do it. He said, I have been pushed to the limit. You can't, with his bad shower. He said, you can't humiliate me any further than you are. So I said, fine, we'll do takes with them. So the boys dyed their tongues and God bless him, like a true sport. Take two, he said, I'm being a bad sport. So he just walked over and said, just do it. Just through lack of money and the stupidity of what we didn't have or did have, uh, created things that, that are really special. And I look at the film now and they've got shower caps on their head and bad paper mache tails and terrible Kmart belts and whatever. It's such a hodgepodge and you know, we walked away with an Oscar and that joke is still basically gets us up in the middle of the night and we're still laughing occasionally. It's just like, why? The films were up against that. It was, oh, it was so embarrassing. And then, you know, they won. All because of mom, Tim's mum had a 15% discount at Kmart. It's fabulous.
Tim had come up with the idea of trying to do it in the movie, of actually doing a credit card dress, and the answer was a flat, pivotal no from everyone. Of course, why not? I mean, everyone else was saying no as well, so we got used to the word no, you know, with these idiots making this stupid film about three drag queens in the desert. So nobody would come anywhere near us, so it evolved into that flip-flop, the thong dress that Hugo wears in... Uh, that was what became of the credit card dress. It was taking the idea and doing something equally ridiculous with it. And, of course, Oscar night came around and suddenly everyone changed their minds. And uh, American Express came through and Lizzie did actually have the dress made up with her name on it with an expiry date of the next day. Those cards were valid for one night and one night only. The shaky groove thing sequence where they pull their plaits off and do shaky groove thing on the bar in Broken Hill. Those... They were literally being held together by string. We didn't have elastic and they were strung in. At one point, Terence's arm... He started to lose the feelings in one arm and realised that we'd cut off his blood supply. And guys started to bleed from the waist because they were cutting into him. I mean, we didn't have elastic, we just had string. And that was a moment, I'll never forget that, of absolute sheer humiliation where Terence also that night said enough and he had a mini strike. And he just, he just looked at himself in the mirror and was bleeding and was in pain and said, what am I doing? Enough. I want out. I want out. And of course, we couldn't stop. We were on this 22-day shoot or whatever it was. And I dragged him back in and said, "Tell." And he's actually said that was the pivotal moment for him. He, in everything he had ever done in his life, that was the most terrifying moment of dressed up like that, in a bar full of very, very heavy, real Australian locals. And that was his fear moment. And he said, to get him up there to that moment, he kicked and screamed and said, "I cannot go through this any longer." But when he did it, he said, "I crossed the line." He said, never in anything that I've ever done in my career have I ever been that frightened. And he said, once I stepped over it, he said, I was fine from that point onwards. And he was perfect from that point onwards. No amount of humiliation. Only the tongue. It's the only thing that he cracked.